Hi, I'm Anna Betancourt. I'm 48 years old and I have stage four colon cancer. Hi, my name is Joanne Simmers. I'm 38 years old and I live in Surrey, BC. On January 2nd of 2020, I was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer at age 37. Hello, my name is Andrew and I was diagnosed with colorectal cancer when I was 29 years old. My name is Mary Devera. I am 41. And in 2016, I was diagnosed with stage 3B rectal cancer. I was 36 and also 8 months postpartum at the time. And I'm Martin Tavares and I'm 46 years of age and I have stage 4 metastatic disease. My name is Mana and I was diagnosed in October 2019 with stage 4 colon cancer. Uh, my name is Armina Lagaya and I was about 35 when I was first diagnosed and uh, it was about stage 2 at the time. Thinking about the circumstances that led to my diagnosis, because I just had a baby uh, with the symptoms that I experienced of a very irregular bowel activity, diarrhea one day, constipation the next, my doctor told me that it's probably because I was breastfeeding or my hormones were no normalizing um, post childbirth. But then I had bleeding episodes, actually three distinct bleeding episodes, and this is just not a drop in the blood. This is a toilet bowl full of blood. Um, it's quite fortunate that my doctor was actually very quick to make that referral for a colonoscopy. I was so surprised to hear from my, from my surgeon that my tumor was 8 to 10 years old. I had this growing inside me since my late 30s. I thought I was doing everything right. I saw my doctor regularly. I, was been, I had been doing breast exams already for five years but my doctor had never told me to get a colonoscopy because I wasn't 50 yet. If I had had the, the screening sooner, it would have been detected and treated at a more manageable stage. I was so angry that I, no one had told me to get screened and that the younger population can develop colon cancer. I started chemotherapy in January and um... I was told that I was incurable and that I was inoperable and that I, if chemotherapy didn't work, I would have six months to live and that if it does work, that I have two or three years. So after 10 rounds of areno tecan Avastin, and Cape Cytobine, um, I had a remarkable response and um, I actually had my first surgery in October of 2020 where they removed my entire colon, rectum and anus. So I am left with a permanent ileostomy. I do believe that there should be more awareness and education on early onset of colorectal cancer. This would have helped me go to my doctor, I believe, earlier, and perhaps it would have given me a better chance in avoiding the amount of treatment gone through. My doctor, my family doctor, and the physicians were very prompt with referring me through the various stages of, final, of finally getting a colonoscopy. But I feel that if I was also flagged with a family history of cancer that I do have, and if the system was set up to identify people at risk like myself, maybe I would have been referred for colonoscopy sooner, and maybe I would have been diagnosed with the massive polyp or smaller polyp that may have been cancer, and I would have been, had early treatment. That's the hope. You know, we were trying to figure out a way to just understand what was going on and, and deal with it and so uh, my husband sought out information and he came across CCRAN and connected with Philomena and we went to uh, a meeting and had been in touch with her uh, over the time of my treatment but ever since and it's been really really helpful particularly for something we just didn't even know how to wrap our minds around. I was introduced to CRAN's services early on in my journey. I quickly learned that asking for that support was very helpful. My friends, my family, and Cran gave me the strength, and most importantly, gave me the knowledge to help me navigate through this journey. Most of us don't have medical degrees. Cran was priceless in helping me make those decisions regarding my treatment. Um, I have sought supporter information throughout my colorectal cancer journey. 
Um, I've connected with other patients um, in my age group. I've connected with the Canadian Cancer Society, which unfortunately they've cancelled their peer-to-peer -peer support program during the COVID pandemic. Um, and then recently I've also been connected to the CRAN network, which has been such a godsend in my life and um, provided me with other options and hope and um, realizing that stage four Stage 4 diagnosis does not have to be a death sentence. I would recommend to anyone that is experiencing this disease to search out as much information as they can from reputable sources, ask as many questions as they can of their medical team and supports and make the best decisions based on that information. In terms of advice for anyone who is going through this uh, as a young person is to seek out uh, others, seek out support, seek out information. Um, there are others who at your age have gone through this. It's, it's not going to be easy, but there is support out there. To anyone else out there who's also dealing with early onset colorectal cancer, I would say to you, uh, you're not alone. Um, if you're suffering in silence, um, please reach out. Um, we're here to support you in any way we can. Um, also, you know, just remember that this is a marathon, it's not a race, not everything is going to happen all at once. Um, take it a day at a time, a step at a time, um, and remember that uh, there's no human out there who has a crystal ball and can tell you what your future holds. So um, just try and stay in the moment and not get too far ahead of yourself. Um, do your research on your disease, um, but don't go down the rabbit hole of what ifs. Um, get out there, get some exercise and fresh air and um, stay hopeful because, um, you know, research is being done every day, progress is being made every day. And I think the, um, future is bright for those of us who are dealing with a cancer diagnosis.